Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we will discuss initial recognition of property planning equipment if it is purchased on account and the payment will be made after one year. So therefore, we have to use time value of money. So let's start. Okay, so before we proceed to the actual computation, in case na bumili tayo ng property in deferred payments, let's first discuss time value of money. So, time value of money is the concept that money available at the present time is worth more than the identical sum in the future due to its potential earning capacity. So, let's have an example. For example, ngayon, 2020, you have 100 pesos. Sa 100 na pesos na yan, makakabili ka po ng 2 kilos of rice. So, kapag dumating po yung 2021, so yung 2 kilos of rice, hindi mo na yan mabibili ng 100 kasi nag-increase na yung value niya into 112, let's say for example. So yung difference po nila, ang tawag po natin doon ay time value of money. So yung 100, considered siya as present value, while the 112 is considered as future value. So yung difference po nila, ang tawag po natin doon sabi nga natin kanina, time value of money. So ito po yung 12 pesos. Yung 12 pesos, ang tawag po natin dyan ay interest component. So, sa property planning equipment, ang goal natin, since ang binibigay is yung future value, for example, it will be paid after 2 years at 112 pesos, then ang goal mo is to find the present value. Kasi yung present value, this will be the amount to be recorded as property planning equipment. Then yung 12 pesos, it will be recorded as discount first, then eventually it will be recorded as interest expense. So now, let's have an example. Okay, let's have an example. So for example, we purchase a property planning equipment on account, deferred payment, so ibig sabihin at a later date, then single payment muna tayo. So we say single payment, one time, big time, pero after more than one year pa. So let's have an example for this. So as an illustration, for example, on January 1, 2020, Corona purchased a new machine for 500,000 which will be paid on December 31, 2022. The cash equivalent price is not determinable. However, the company has an incremental borrowing rate of 12%. So, to compute for the property planning equipment, so ito yung mga kailangan nating tandaan. So, January 1 bumili, babayaran December 31, 2022. So, yung December 31, 2022, considered po yan as future date. Dahil ayan yung future date po natin, so, yung 500,000 natin doon is considered as future value. So, however, bumili kasi tayo January 1, 2020. So, in January 1, 2020, this is the present time. So, hindi natin pwede siya i-record as 500. So, i-record po natin yung January 1, 2022 at present value. However, the present value is not determinable. So, since the cash equivalent price is not determinable, so, wala tayong ilalagay dyan, di ba? However, it has to be computed using the incremental borrowing rate of 12%. So, to get the present value, simple lang naman yan, di ba? So, ito, ano lang, review. So, to compute for the future value, ang computation lang naman dyan is present value times the 1, one plus rate, then raised dun sa ating period. So, or kaya naman, pwede rin naman makompute yung future value as present value plus interest. So, sa case natin, ginamit ko yung 3 as period kasi... January 1, 2020, tapos December 31, 2022. 2020, 2021, 2022. So, para naman makompute natin yung present value, balik tarin mo lang. So, dito naman, to compute for the present value, future value times 1.12 raised to negative 3 kasi nga, pabalik tayo. So, dun sa ating problem, so, as you can see, to get the present value, so, the future value is 500,000. Then the rate is 12%, ang period natin 3 years. So ang computation lang natin is 500,000 times 1.12 raised to negative 3. So pag kinuha nyo po yung present value at single payment yan is 0 0.7118 rounded off to 4 decimal places times the 500,000. Therefore, the present value is 355,900. Yung 355,900, ayan po yung i-record natin sa ating property plant and equipment kasi nga single payment lang siya pero on account as deeper. To journalize what we have computed earlier, so ito yung na-compute natin, di ba? The present value is 355,900. So before tayo mag-journal entry, so ito yung mga kailangan natin i-consider. So first, yung ating computation. So di ba, the future value is 500,000. So we have to 
it has to be broken down into two parts. Yung isa, present value. Yung isa, interest. Yung present value, ito yung value na i-record ire natin sa ating property planning equipment. Then yung interest naman, it will be recorded over time kapag nag-accrue na yung interest. So, at January 1, 2020, this should be the proper entry, di ba? We have to debit machines worth 355,900, which is the present value. Then we have to debit discount on notes payable 144,100, which will eventually be recorded as interest expense over time. Then we have to credit the notes payable in case nag-issue siya ng note. Notes payable, ang amount niyan, yung future value na 500. So, pag dumating naman po tayo ng December 31, 2020, since hindi pa naman nagmamature yung ating obligation, ang kailangan lang natin gawin is to recognize the corresponding interest expense. So, from discount to notes payable, it will be interest expense. So, this will be the entry. So, to compute for the interest expense, simply compute the, get the present value, 355,900 times 12%. So, makukuha natin doon ay 42,708. Then, debit interest expense, then credit, discount, on notes payable. So, kapag ano naman po, December 31, 2021, hindi pa nagmamature yung obligation natin, mag-recognize lang din tayo ng another interest expense. So, debit interest expense, then credit, discount, on notes payable. Sa case natin, dahil second year na to, the computation will be different. So, 355,900, which is the present value, plus the interest accrued on the first year, which is 42,708, multiplied by 12%. So, ang lalabas na result then ay 47,833. So, last year, which is the date of payment, so first, let's accrue first the last, inter the last discount on notes payable. So, the computation will be 144,100, which is the total interest expense over the life of the payment or over the life of the notes payable. I-minus lang po natin lahat na nag-accrued na interest expense. 42,708 noong first year, 47,833 ng second year. So, ang i-recognize na lang po natin ay 53,599 pesos. So, since na-exhaust na natin yung discount on notes payable at ito na yung maturity date, so at the date of payment, ang i-recognize na lang po natin is ito na lang. So, debit tayo ng notes payable which is the future value which is now the present value at December 31, 2022 then credit tayo ng cash 500,000. Okay, how about if the PPE was purchased on account, deferred payments, pero ordinary annuity? So, if we say ordinary annuity, it will be paid at a later date, pero by installment. So, the first installment must be paid at the end of the period. So, let's have an example. So, for example, on January 1, 2020, Corona purchased a new machine for 300,000 pesos, which will be paid on installment basis starting December 31, 2020 for 100,000 pesos each year. The cash equivalent price is not determinable. The company has an incremental borrowing rate of 12%. So dahil hindi determinable yung equivalent price, we still need to compute for the present value. So alam naman natin yung 300,000, ayan yung future value niya. Since uh, babayaran siya each year until maubos yung 300, so therefore the last year will be Janu December 31, 2022. So ang trabaho natin is to compute the present value at January 1, 2020. So, to compute the present value at ordinary annuity, this will be the formula, di ba? So, dahil installment po yan, hindi natin gagamitin yung future value na 300. Kung hindi, yung annual installment. So, the formula will be annual payments times open parenthesis 1 minus 1.12 raised to negative 3. Negative 3 yung ginamit natin kasi ang period natin ay 3. Kasi 3 years, 300,000 to 100 each year, so may 3 tayo. Divided by 0.12. So, based on sa ating given, so this will be the present value. 100,000, open parenthesis 1, minus 1.12, raised to negative 3 over 0.12. So, therefore, the present value factor at ordinary annuity at 12% in 3 periods, we have 2.4018, rounded off 4 decimal places. It times natin sa annual payment, so 100,000 makukuha po natin yung present value na 240,180. So, sa pag-record natin ng property planning equipment, ito yung kailangan nyo pong tandaan. So, yung ating payments, ang total nyan ay 300. However, the present value is 240,180. So, yung difference po, it has to be recognized as interest expense over time. So, this will be the distribution. 
So the future value is 300,000 kasi 3 installments, 100, 100, 100. The present value, which was already computed sa taas, 241.80. Then the difference, this will be the interest expense to be recorded over time, which is 59,820. So para mas magdali ang ka sa pag-record, so mas maganda, magpe-prepare po tayo ng tinatawag po natin na amortization table. Okay, so before we record the transaction, let's make first an amortization table. So, to prepare an amortization table, ito mo yung kailangan nating tandaan, di ba? So, the future value is 300,000, present value is 241.80, then the interest is 59,820. So, sa amortization table natin, ito dapat yung magiging itsura niya, di ba? So, January 1, 2020 is the date of purchase. So, yung present value nyo is 241.80, as you can see. Then, at December 31, 2020, which is the first year na magbabayad tayo ng 100,000, sa lagay lang natin yan, 100,000. Then, let's compute for the interest, 24180 times 12%. We have 28,822. So, ngayon, to get the balance at December 31, 2020, so, ang gagawin nyo muna, i-apply muna natin yung interest. So, ang gagawin natin, the annual payment, 100,000, minus the interest of 28,822, the answer would be 71,178 which will be deducted to the balance of 24180 para makuha natin yung 169,002 and so on and so forth hanggang maging zero siya. So since na-prepare na natin yung amortization table, so check nyo yung mga interest expense na naka-recognize dyan. Meron tayong 28,822, 20,280, 10,818. So pag tinotal nyo po yan, the total interest I should be 59,920, which is the same dun sa na-compute natin. So basically, ang trabaho nyo lang dyan is to separate the future value of 300,000 sa present value tsaka sa future interest natin na 59,820. So to compute that, so it, this will be the right entry dahil meron na tayong mga figures. So at January 1, 2020, the machine should be 240, 120, 180, then you have to recognize debit, discount, or notes payable, 59,820, and the notes payable, 300,000. So, yung notes payable muna, discount o notes payable muna yung gagamitin natin kasi wala pa naman nag-accru ng interest. So, pagdating mo ng December 31, 2020, since nag-lapse na yung one year, so we need to pay cash na 100,000. So, kung mapapansin nyo, nag-credit tayo dyan ng cash 100,000. Then, debit tayo na notes payable, which is 100,000, kasi ayun yung first installment. Then, we have to debit interest expense, which is the first interest expense uh, accrued, which is 28,822. Then, credit tayo ng discount o notes payable na 28,822. So, gagawin mo lang yan ang gagawin hanggang sa dumating ka sa December 31, 2022. So, this is how you make a journal entries using... Uh, purchase on account, deferred payments, ordinary annuity. Okay, for annuity dyan naman, so same concept with ordinary annuity, magkaiba lang po yung timing ng payments. Kasi sa ordinary annuity, the first payment will be paid after one period. Sa annuity dyan naman, advance. So, at the date of purchase, so magbibigay na po ng same amount dun sa kanyang installment. So, let's have an example. For example, in January 1, 2020, Corona purchased a new machine for 300,000 which will be paid on installment basis starting January 1, 2020 which is the date of purchase, 100,000 each year. So, the cash equivalent price is not determinable. The company has incremental borrowing rate of 12%. So, same approach. So, compute na yung future value, 300,000. Yung present value, not, uh, not yet determined. So, compute natin. However, the formula will be different kasi nga, at the beginning pa lang, meron na po tayong babayaran. So, the interest expense should be lesser, di ba? So, sa case natin, to get the present value, the formula should be annual payments times open parenthesis 1 plus 1 minus open parenthesis 1.12 raised to negative 2. Negative 2 kasi uh, annuity nga. So, 2 periods lang yung gagamitin natin. Kasi 3 period yung babayaran, pero yung isa walang interest. Kaya negative 2 lang yung gagamitin natin over 0.12. So, this will be the computation. So, to get the present value of uh, annuity due at 3 periods at 12%, so, ayan po. 
100,000 annual payments, 1, open parenthesis, 1 minus 1.12 raised to negative 2, then divided by 0.12. So, ang makukuha po natin dyan present value at annuity due using uh, 12% at 3 period will be 2.6901 rounded off ulit sa 4 at rounded off ulit sa 4 decimal places. So, makukuha po natin yung 6,269,010 pesos. So, kapag nilatag po natin yan, ito po yung magiging itsura. The future value is 300,000. Then, yung present value natin, 269,010. And the remaining amount, which is 30,990, will be part of the interest expense to be recognized over time, over the life of the debt, or yung utang natin. So, next is to prepare a amortization table. Okay. To prepare the amortization table, ito yung ating considerations, di ba? So, the future value should be 300,000. The present value is 269, 10 pesos. The interest expense, 30,990 to be recognized over the life of the debt. So, your amort amortization table should look like this, di ba? So, on January 1, 2020, the balance is 269, 10, which is the present value. However, the same day, we need to pay 100,000 kasi nga annuity due. So, since same day yan, no interest will be recorded. So, zero yung interest. So, yung buong 100,000 will be deducted dun sa balance natin na 269 and 10 pesos. So, ang balance na lang po natin at January 1, 2020 ay 169.010. So, December 31, 2021, mag-record na tayo ng interest kasi may naglaps na ng one year. So, 169.10 pesos times 12%, 20,281. Then, plus lang natin sa 169 minus sa 100 para makuha natin yung balance na 89,281 hanggang sa maubo siya at December 31, 22, which is the last payment. So, kung papansin ninyo, yung ating interest, dalawa lang. Meron tayong 2281 tapos 10,709. So, pag tinotal mo niyan, 30,990, which is the same dun sa na-compute natin kanina, na 30,990 to be compute ay to be recorded over the life of the debt. So, since meron na tayong amortization table, record natin yung corresponding journal entries. So, at January 1, which is the date of purchase, so we just debit machine, 269, 10 pesos, which is the present value. Then, debit tayo ng discount to notes payable, 30,990, which is the total interest to be accrued over the life of the debt. Then, credit tayo ng cash, 100,000, kasi nagbayad tayo ng first installment, kasi nga, annuity due, 100,000. Then, credit tayo ng notes payable, the remaining amount, which is 200,000 pesos, kasi nabayaran na natin yung 100,000. So, kapag dumating na po yung December 31, so we just need to recognize the interest expense accrued. Debit lang ng interest expense, 2281, then credit discount on notes payable, 2281. As you can see, hindi pa tayo nag-record ng payment kasi nga, the payment will be made January 1. So, December 31, 2020, i-accrue lang natin yung interest. However, pagdating mo ng January 1, so magbabayad ka na, debit ka ng notes payable, then credit ka ng cash, sa so, ilalagay mong amount doon yung annual payments, which is 100,000. So, ayan po yung concept kapag annuity due. Thank you.